Take your Bibles up in the first Samuel chapter 26. He said, well, now I remember last thing we looked at was chapter 26. Indeed it was, but it's been three months now since we have been in this study, believe it or not, three months. So I want to uh, go back for a few verses in chapter 26. I think it would help us to get into the context of chapter 27 as we proceed on. And we don't have too many, just a few more messages left in this uh, uh, study. 1 Samuel chapter 26. And what I want to do is I want to read beginning with verse 17. And Saul knew David's voice and said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, O Lord, my king. And he said, Wherefore doth my Lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in mine hand? Therefore I pray thee, let my Lord, the king, hear the words of his servant. If the Lord hath stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. I'm going to stop right there, and we're going to go back and look at that passage and go on into the chapter 27 in just a moment. But let us bow together in prayer. We pray, Lord, that you'll fill us up. Give us, Lord, what we all need to hear here this evening. We have come to study your word, and I pray that your word will be fed to all of us. You've given it to me to prepare, and now may I dispense this meal unto all who are present among us here tonight. To you be the glory for what you're going to do. In your name I pray, amen. Now, you know that in this study, Saul was anointed the king of Israel. And that was, he was anointed by Samuel. But Saul was not a great king. In fact, God had his hand upon David, who would be the king. Yet David was not put on the throne yet. He had been privately anointed by Samuel, but he's not on the throne yet. Saul was jealous of David because David had killed the great big giant Goliath. Saul was very jealous and he had tried numerous times to try to have David killed to no avail because God had his hand on David. So it wasn't going to happen. But anyway, David respected the fact that Saul was anointed by God, even though Saul was not the best king in the world. And David was just waiting his turn, waiting his time when he would be put on the throne. But he was not going to do it prematurely by killing King Saul, because Saul had been anointed by God. So David wouldn't dare do that. With all of that in mind, I want us to look here at chapter 26, and we see beginning with verse 17. Well, let me tell you that right prior to this particular passage that I just read, right prior to that, David was in his camp with some of his soldiers, about 600 to be exact, and Saul was in his camp up on a hill, and he was guarded by his security guard, if you want to call it that, or the captain of his army might be more sufficient to call him that, but his name was Abner. And Abner was watching Saul, had the responsibility to protect the king. Well, David went to some of his men and said, I want one of you to go with me. We're going to go up there where Saul's at to his camp. And some of them probably thinking, were you crazy? He'll kill you if we go up there. But 
David said, one of you go with me. And so his nephew, David's older sister's boy, his name was Abishai. He is a nephew of David. And Abishai speaks up and says, David, I, I'll go with you and let's go together. And they do in this nighttime. And Saul is sleeping in a trench. Abner is right nearby him. And again, Abner, the captain of the army, or the captain of the guard, had the responsibility to watch and protect his king, Saul. But you know what God did, don't you remember? God put him in a deep sleep. Oh, it was a very deep sleep. For this is what happened. While they're laying there snoozing away, David goes up with Abishai and says, look, they're sleeping. And Abish you know what Abishai told David, his uncle, to do? He said, Uncle David, hey, he said, this is the grand opportunity. This is the right time. Just slay him. Kill him right here on the spot. Then you can become the king. David says, no, Abishai, that's not the way it's going to be. I'm not going to prematurely allow myself to go to the throne by killing in cold blood by murdering Saul, the king. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. He's been anointed by God. And, and David said this. David actually said that, that God will take care of it. He said that Saul will either die of old age or someone will kill him or he will die in battle. Or God will just take care of it. That's what David said. But David looked over at Abishai, his nephew, and he said, but son, listen, this is what we're going to do. He said, look over there and where his spear is at. You know where Saul's spear was? When Saul was asleep, hey, a king would have a spear right near his head. The Bible says it was near his bolster, and a bolster is a pillow. And so as Saul lay upon his pillow, his sword was right beside his head. And you can say, how on earth would they be able to go and grab his sword without disturbing or waking up that king? Again, God put him in a very deep sleep. And so they got the sword, and David said, not just the sword. He said, Abishai, grab his water, get his little canteen of water, get the water, bring it to that little vessel of water, bring that and the sword, and let's go back up the hill, let's go back up to our camp. And they did. They went back up into their camp. And it's all right in the dead of the middle of the night. And David starts to shout, and he says, oh, Abner, remember who Abner is? captain of the guard, who's supposed to be protecting the king. And so David says, Abner, 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 listen to me now. And Abner says, oh, who is it? Who's, who's hollering from up there? David said, you are to watch the king, and you didn't do it. You let the guard down. Abner, you let the guard down, and because of that, you are worthy to die, said David. Abner didn't know who was speaking. Abner didn't know it was David. And Abner's thinking, what in the world are you talking about? And then David says to Abishai, hold up the spear. And he said, Abner, look, look, this is Saul's spear. And then Abner's looking around, he looks over at the king, and he sees the spear is gone. And he says, hold up the water. And he holds up the water. He said, look, there's the king's water. And Abner looks, and the water's gone. And boy, you know he had to be frightened by then. He said, how did you do this? God put him in a deep sleep, see? Well, anyway, David had been hollering. And although Abner didn't know his voice, Saul did. So let's look at chapter 26, verse 12. And we see that in the latter part of that verse, a deep sleep from the Lord had been fallen upon them. See, just as I said, a deep sleep had been fallen upon them. And as we go then, as David is yelling out to Abner, Saul wakes up. And Saul's probably a little groggy. Right there in the dead of the middle of the night, Saul wakes up. And verse 17 says, Saul knew David's voice. I guess he would know David's voice. For after a while, for a period of time, Saul was David's own father-in-law. Because you remember, when, when Goliath was intimidating the people of Israel, Goliath was threatening the people, and they had, they, it was a valley between them, and the only way this battle could be fought between the Israelites and the Philistines was when, with one against one, where they would have to fight one-on-one, -on -one, and 
everyone of Israel, including King Saul, was scared of Goliath, that nine-foot-tall giant. Everyone was scared of him, but David, and David fought him with a slingshot, slung the slingshot, and hit the giant right between the eyes and knocked him flat down on his back and killed him. But right prior to that, King Saul had said to the men of Israel, if any one of you men will be brave enough, if any one of you men will be courageous enough, if any one of you men will be bold enough to stand against that big giant and you beat him, I will give you one of my daughters to be your wife. He kept his promise too. David beat the giant and Saul had a daughter. Her name was Michael and he gave her unto David to be his wife. But Saul was not the man to trust all the time. He wasn't a good king. And Saul felt Saul was so angry at David. And wanted, Saul was jealous when all the women were singing that Saul had killed his thousands and David had killed his ten thousands and so forth and so on. And so well, what happened? Saul got so jealous. One day he took David's wife, his daughter, away from David and gave her to another man. So... Saul knew David's voice because at one time he was his father-in-law, but right here he's not his father-in-law anymore. As we look at verse 17 of chapter 26, Saul knew David's voice and said, Is this thy voice, my son David? Notice he said, my son David. He's, he's looking at David as though he is still his son-in-law, but David did not call him father this time. As David said, it is my voice, O my Lord, O King. He called him Lord and King. He didn't call him father-in-law because Saul had taken David's wife away from him. And he said, verse 18, notice there with me, Wherefore doth my Lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in thine hand? David said, Saul, O King Saul, why is it that all this time you have been hunting me down, trying to kill me? What is going on? What is it? Why do you keep doing this? King Saul. Therefore I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. David said, he said, now King uh, Saul, I don't understand this, why you keep trying to kill me. If I've done some kind of sin, then let me give a trespass offering and make it right with God. But he said this, and look at it. He said, if men have, children of men have stirred this up, then cursed be they before the Lord, for they have driven me, and you have driven me out, says David unto Saul, unto the world from the inheritance of the Lord, saying, go serve other gods. What is the inheritance of the Lord? Israel was God's inheritance, and David was saying, Saul, you have driven me out among my people, and you are not allowing me to be around them because you're threatening my life. You keep wanting to kill me, and what have I done? What have I done? To deserve this. He said in verse 20. He said you have come out to seek. At the latter part of that verse. Look he said come out and seek a flea. David considered. Although David was a man after God's own heart. And David had brought down the giant. And although David was going to be the king of Israel. David was looking at his own life. And saying I'm not. I'm like a flea compared to other people. That's humility right there. As I preached on this morning. He looked at himself as being worthless and of no importance. He said, I'm like a flea. I'm like a, a partridge that one does hunt in the, in the mountains. And then as we go on, we see in verse 21, Saul said, I have sinned. Hey, we've kind of we've heard something like that out of Saul before. Saul confessing, saying, I've done wrong, I've done you wrong, David, but then he couldn't be trusted, couldn't be trusted as far as David could throw a stone. And boy, he could throw a stone pretty hard and pretty long as he drank down that giant one time. But Saul could not be trusted. Saul said, I've sinned. He said, return, my son, David, for I will do thee no more harm. See that in verse 21? Saul said, my, my, because my soul was precious in thine eyes today, Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. I want you to notice the, the latter part of that verse. As, Paul, I mean, as Saul said, I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. I played the fool and erred exceedingly. Saul recognized he was the fool, that he was the one doing wrong. But how much could David trust the man? 
And then as we go on, it says, and David answered in verse 22, and behold the king's spear. Let one of your young men come and fetch it. David could have took that spear and that water back down to King Saul, but he didn't do it because he didn't trust Saul to turn on him. He didn't trust him. And then it says in verse 23, he said, The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and faithfulness, for the Lord delivered thee into mine hand today, but I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. David said, Saul, I could have killed you. I could have killed you. I was so close. I could have taken your spear and me or my nephew Abishai. We could have stuck that spear through your chest and into the ground and you'd have been a dead man today. That's not the first time Saul's life was spared by David. But there was the other time when Saul went into a cave that David was hiding in and Saul didn't know. And Saul took off his robe and he set it down and David went and tore, uh, cut a piece off the robe. And then David told Saul later, he said, look, I've got a piece of your robe. And what he was doing there was insulting Saul's dignity as the king. Here by taking a sword, he is taking away Saul's authority as the king. He said, you think you're a big shot. I took your spear, but here, I'm going to let one of my men take it down to you. He said, uh, I'm not going down. I'm going to let one of my men take it to you. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt do great things and shalt still prevail. And so David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. Saul said, David, you're going to do great things and you're going to be the king. Go your way, I'll go mine. And I want you to know that this is the last time we see Saul saying anything to David ever again. Saul never spoke to David again after this. And among the last words we heard Saul say, among the last words that came out of Saul's mouth was, I played the fool and I have done exceedingly. Indeed, he did play the fool. And indeed, he did do exceedingly bad. We go in into chapter 27, verse 1. David said, in his heart. And you know what that means when somebody says something in their heart? They're saying something to themselves. So David did not say this audibly where anyone could hear it, but he said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. I want to ask something here. Everyone listen to me. Where was David's faith? He said, I'm going to, I'm going to die one day and Saul is going to kill me. Where's his faith? Samuel, the man who was so revered in Israel, had told David, you are going to be the king. You're going to be king of Israel. And so many times God had delivered David out of trials and out of dangerous places when Saul was trying to kill him. God had delivered David. And he says, I'm going to die. Saul's going to kill me. Saul had just said, go your way. I'll go my way. Where is David's faith? Remember that I said that in this message tonight. Remember Pastor Randy saying, where is David's faith? At the conclusion, I'll come back. But he said, there's nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. What? Why should David go to the land of the Philistines? Were not the Philistines Israel's biggest enemies? Indeed, they were. And get this, the story gets even more bizarre. He said, and uh, Saul shall despair of me, or that is, he will not have hope of killing me if I go to the land of the Philistines. He said, he will not be seeking me. And David arose and he passed over with 600 men that were with them unto, this is where it gets really bizarre here. Look at it. He goes to Achish, the son of Maok, the king of Gath. Now what is bizarre about all of this? I'll tell you. The king of Gath. Gath is one of the five Philistine cities. And the king of Gath, well that, Gath is where, and I think you said it, Gene, is where Goliath was from. 
Goliath was from the city of Gath. But not only that, listen to me. Look over at chapter 21. In chapter 21, there was another time that David had gone to Gath. In chapter 21, beginning with verse 10. And it says there that David had arose one time before and fled that day for fear of Saul. That's twice he had gone to Gath, a city in the, among the Philistines, went to Achish, the king of Gath, and the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this the king of the, uh, of the land? And did not uh, they sing uh, about him and dance and saying, Saul hath slain his thousands and, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and he feigned himself mad in their hands and he scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. And then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, see, this man is mad. He's gone crazy. He's acting weird. He said, Therefore, have you brought him to me? He said, Get him out of here. I don't want him, is what he said. So the one time before David had gone to Gath and to King Achish, he's by himself. Word got out who he was, and he's scared. So he acted like he's losing his mind. He's going crazy. And when he did that, then the king said, get him out of here. I don't want him. Some time had passed by, and now he goes back. But this time, look at chapter 27, and you see it says in verse 2, this time he takes 600 men with him. He's not going by himself. He goes to Achish, the son of Maok, the king of Gath. And uh, why would the king of Gath whose name was, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to get used to this, it's bumping into my shirt. But anyway, why would the king even receive David? Why would he be receptive to David? And the reason why is because he knew that David was an enemy of Saul, and anyone who was an enemy of Saul would be accepted by any king of the Philistines. So David went and he stayed in with Achish at Gath, verse 3 says, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, Ahinoam and the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the, uh, the Carmelites, and Abel's wife. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and so he sought him no more. That's precisely exactly what David had anticipated, desired, and wanted, was that if he would go to Gath among the Philistines, that Saul would not hunt him down anymore, and then David would feel secure in his life and would not have to worry about being killed. To me, that's a lack of faith. Where he should have, what he should have done was stayed where he was and trusted God instead of worrying about man. I'll get back to that at the end. Just hang with me. Now it says, uh, it was told Saul that he wasn't there. Saul didn't seek him anymore. Verse 5, David said to Achish, if I have now found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. For why should I dwell in the royal city with thee? So David has this grand plan. He goes to King Achish and he said, Now I am here in Gath with 600 men, and not only 600 men, but their wives and their children. It was estimated to be between two to 3,000 people there with David and his group. And they're all crowded in Gath, and David says to the king, Achish, he said, why don't you give us some land somewhere where we can dwell together, and we will be out of your way, we won't bother you, we'll keep peace with you, and, and, and everything will go just right, just well. And so King Achish agreed to that. Look at it. King Achish gave him a place called Ziklag. And to that day Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah to this day. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. So almost a whole year and a half, David stayed in Philistia and the country that was enemies to his people, Israel, of whom he would be king of one day soon. How strange. Verse 8 says, David and his men, while they were there in this place called Ziklag in Philistia, David and his men, uh, once upon a time, on a given day, it says that they went up, verse 8, and invaded some people. They invaded people called the Gesherites, the Gezerites, and the Amalekites. 
And notice something very interesting there in verse 8. These were nations that were of old and the inhabitants of the land. So in other words, God told Joshua after the Israelites had gone through their 40 years of wilderness wandering, wilderness wandering that when they got to the promised land, the land, Canaan land, the land that God had given to them to wipe out all the Ites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, all of them, wipe them all out, every one, man, woman, all civilization, all animals, wipe them all out because God did not want His people Israel to be influenced by their Canaanite ways and their worldly ways and their and so wipe them all out, and the people of Israel didn't complete the job. And so many years later, David does. And he goes in and he takes care of what was supposed to have taken care of many years before with Joshua. David smote the land, it says in verse 9, and he left neither man nor woman alive and took away the sheep and the oxen and the asses and the camels and the apparel and returned and came to Achish. And Achish said, Whither have you been made road today? That seems a little strange there, doesn't it? Where have you been today, David says, King Achish? Now, something can happen in a country in Europe, and we can know in America within minutes because of the way people can communicate throughout the world and through the Internet and such. But back then, they could be as close as they were and David fought in three and a, a, a big, ferocious, bloody war against three groups of people. And King Achish didn't even know anything had happened. What you been doing today? David could have said, well, I've been out fishing today. And he'd never known the difference. But David didn't say that. Let's look and see what David said to the king. David said in, the, uh, in verse 10, Against the south of Judah, against the south of Jer Jerambalites, and against the south of the Kenites, we've been fighting. Now, Israel in the south boarded, bordered, bordered Philistia. So although David was fighting enemies to King Achish, or, or rather allies to King Achish, let me get this right, David was fighting allies to King Achish. King Achish thought David was fighting his own countrymen, Israelites. He really was naive and believed that. He thought that David, David was fighting allies to King Achish, the king of, of Gath, but no, no, no. Uh, what David said is we've just been fighting. He didn't say who they're fighting against, so the king thinks he's fighting against Israelites. So the king believed David, it says there in verse 12, saying, He hath made his people Israel utterly to abhor him. Israelites got to hate this man. He's fighting his own people. That's not what he's doing. But that's what the king thought. Therefore he shall be my servant forever. And actually David was within days and weeks and months and of becoming the king of Israel and being put on the throne because Saul is soon about to die. But going back, and this is how I'm going to close. Going back to that part where I said, where was David's faith earlier when he went to Philistia to start with? When he should have trusted God. And then not only where was David's faith, but when David deceived King Achish into thinking that he was fighting his own countrymen, Israelites, when instead he was fighting allies to the king. We could say that was sneaky and deceptive of David. Why would David do something like that? And why would he soon become king? And why would God use him? It just goes to show that God uses imperfect people. And that's why all of us, from me to you on down, we can say God uses imperfect people. And I can say that because I know he uses me. And I'm not perfect. I fall way short. I, well, I fall way short, and we all do. And God's, you know what? We are just like the songs that we saw on the screen behind me. We're just sinners saved. Old sinners is all we are. We're just old sinners saved by the grace of God. And for that reason, we can all shout, Amen, 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 and Amen. As the songs were on the screen behind me tonight. 
God can use all of us for his glory. He doesn't condone sin. He doesn't want us to have a lack of faith. He wants us to have faith. And the Bible says, without faith, we cannot please him. We must trust him. We must believe him. And we must live for him and put him first and foremost in our life and honor him and glorify him. But we do fall short. God is a good God, and he's a God of grace and a God of mercy. And God will use all of us, just as he used David. That's our study here for this evening. Let us pray.